If I wanted to be a rich online coach in 2024, this is what I would do. The first thing I would do if I wanted to be successful as an online coach in 2024 is getting in really, really good shape. Now, this seems incredibly obvious, yet the number of personal trainers, online coaches who I see who are incredibly out of shape is phenomenal. If you want to make more money as an online coach, being in great shape and looking like someone your clients want to look like is the foundation that underpins that. And for me, in my own fitness career, my business always did the best when I looked the best. Why? Because when you're in great shape, guess what? Your content works better. When you're in great shape, what also works better, your mind, because you're more confident. Because you look in the mirror every day at the way you look, and that's the first win of the day. So confidence breeds success, success breeds confidence. So you practicing what you preach is incredibly important. And that's why if you're an online coach listening to this, watching this, one of the best things you can do is also have a coach who's coaching you. So you actually get better in terms of the skills of your job of being a coach, and you also improve your body, which is the number one billboard you have to get clients into your business. It's the same thing in terms of if you're looking for financial advice, you wouldn't take financial advice from someone's broke, or you wouldn't take advice from someone building an online fitness business who hasn't built an online fitness business. My case and example, we transformed over 8,000 clients all over the world. I know exactly how to build a fitness business so I can help you. And to be transparent, there's a lot of charlatans on the internet right now who are trying to teach you something they can't do themselves. And that's the big job in the terms of the content that we're creating is to give you the actual answers of what we do in our own business that's working every single day. And we're gonna share all these throughout the video and the best one is last. Number two, the most important thing you actually need to do is content creation. And this is a skill for you to be good at content. And if you don't know how to do that already, if you check out below this video, we have a free access to our 4C course, how we teach you how to create content, to create conversations, to create calls, to create clients. This is one of the steps that's made me millions of dollars and also a client's lots of money. So you can check that out for free below. And we're gonna break down the steps you need to get good at content now. Firstly is high quality production. Now, the better the quality of the content you make, the more generally it's gonna pop. The new iPhone 15 Pro is wildly good and that is actually good enough to make a lot of content. What you don't wanna be doing is making content like an iPhone 10 because that will look terrible and it's the quickest way for you to look a complete amateur in your business. People are gonna take a huge amount of the perception of when they first see you, what type of gym are you filming in, how good is the quality of the camera, like what's the clothing you're wearing look like. If you want a premium brand, you have to look premium. Number two is strong hooks. So an example of hook would be at the beginning of this video where we used a money gun. I'm using that to grab your attention. And that's how you can use a visual hook in a video to really pull someone in. Same as using an engaging backdrop. Another type of hook you can have is in terms of copy. So like the actual text and language you use. So like if you start to use the things like three secrets to lose your belly fat, three things you didn't know about getting shredded, like things that graze curiosity, which we're gonna come on to later in this video, of how you can actually maximize these to get more inbound traffic get more engagement and get more leads. Number three is high energy. Now you see a lot of people are very flat. You see when I talk, I talk a lot with my hands. If I was here like this and just talking to you, it'd be very, very boring. Whereas you wanna be high energy, move and add some engagement into content when you talk. And you can see people when they're very uncomfortable when they're on camera because they're stood like this talking as if they're like a school play. Number four is make it entertaining. And what I like to think about is edutainment. So a lot of our day in the life vlogs, we focus on that. We're showing cool stuff, making it fun and interesting to watch but they were also teaching you things at the same time. Because the number one reason people go on social media is actually first the entertainment. They then see you can get your problem solved by working with that creator or the coach, and that's when they buy into you and they want to sign up with you as a client. Number five is look for trends. And there are some insane trends happening right now on social media, and in particular on Instagram. And I'm gonna share one of those in our latest vlog, which you can see on screen right now, where I'm showing exactly what I learned from one of Alex Ramosi's best friends that got me to get a post last week, get over 350,000 views, and the post probably took me about two minutes. So the more you pay attention to the trends of what's working in social media, the more you get unfair advantage and you can beat your competitors. And something to always remember is best known beats best. Number six, don't be salesy at the start. Now, in particular at the start, what you wanna do is you wanna build up your goodwill account with basically all the people who are following you to provide them as value as possible, really get them to buy into you, and I would advise trying not to sell straight away out the gate. If you give someone enough value and you help them enough, eventually at some point they're gonna buy from you. And the amount of people who watch these videos to tell me how much has helped them, how much has changed their mindset, how much money, more money they've made, and the amount of people that have then worked with us from that, because I've made free content helping them, because I enjoy this and take a huge amount of fulfillment, is wild. So the first thing we focus on at the beginning is don't be salesy because salesy content will also hurt your reach and your engagement. Seven, face shot. This is not a porno, but this basically means that in terms of what you're looking to do is actually always have your face in camera. 
If I was talking to you like this and facing the back of the room, in particular with short form content, it doesn't work. So you need to have your face and camera and actually look down the barrel of the camera when you're talking to people. And if you're filming, I usually do this a lot, I'd film like a selfie style stuff and it'd be a camera with the flip out. I look at the, the bloody screen, not the camera lens, and my eyes would always be looking in a weird place. So always look at the lens, have your face in shot, have your face in shot on the camera image, have your face in shot on YouTube thumbnails, and your content will perform better. Now the third big mistake so many people are making, and this is a huge mistake I've been making, probably the start of the last seven, eight years in business, is a focus on too many platforms. To give an example, one of our clients asked me yesterday, should I start doing YouTube? Guys getting like a thousand views are real. I was like, no. YouTube is very intensive in terms of the amount of time it takes to do. It's difficult to edit and it's a bit of a distraction. So if you're looking to grow an online coaching business, can YouTube help you do that? A thousand percent. But what I'd focus on first is leaning into platforms first that are easier to actually execute on and they're quicker to learn on. And my cat here completely agrees. He likes, likes making YouTube videos and making YouTube videos. So the first thing I'd focus on is actually Instagram and going deep into that and getting that to work. Because Instagram can be a platform you can really learn on in terms of the skill of what works, hooks at work, and how to get virality. The other platform I'd look at, depending on what niche you're working in, is LinkedIn. So if you're using um, clients who are slightly older or you're targeting executives, the average value of a client on LinkedIn is wildly higher than you're gonna see specifically on something like Instagram, and TikTok's probably the worst platform for actually building a fitness business. You can get a lot of reach, you can get a lot of traffic, but you can also get a lot of brokies who aren't necessarily gonna pay the bills. So if your goal is to be a successful online coach who actually makes money in 2024, I'd focus first on Instagram, then debatably LinkedIn, and then if you have time and you're great on camera, then YouTube would be something. If you're a great talker, then maybe podcasts. And the thing is, you have to lean into your strengths. Example of this, if you have a face for radio, as in you're not very good looking, you probably shouldn't be on video, and you probably shouldn't be on Instagram, but you might be great on podcasts. I would also say respectfully, if you have a face for radio, online coaching is probably gonna be a challenging gig for you because it's very much how you look in terms of that's what we sell. So the last thing I'd actually say that I made a big mistake on was actually when we were trying to grow our content is we were trying to do too many things and the quality wasn't good enough because we weren't making content that was specific to each platform. We were spraying and praying. And this actually happened last week. We were making like sick Instagram reels which had like text which was like Instagram is dead, a bit of copy and then read the caption below. And what did we do? We posted it on YouTube Shorts. And what happens? YouTube Shorts doesn't have a caption, so there's nothing you can watch. My, cam my cat agrees so much so that he's also angry and irritated that this happens. But this is also a lesson in business that you need to have the ability to focus and focusing on content, you wanna focus on things that can give you massive leverage and just get them to work. So if you can get one video to get you 10 million views, that's better than having 10 videos to get a million views because it's easier to make one, con one piece of content that bangs than 10 that are average. So now I'm gonna give you the secrets of marketing in terms of scaling your business. Now, number one, simplest idea wins. Now, why the simplest idea wins basically means it's retail proof. That someone who's like 10th level grade education can understand what you're talking about. And if you look at example, someone like Alex Hormozzi, why his content does very well, he takes very complicated subjects and breaks them down and simplifies them. So actually the shorter and more concise you can make something and explain something, the more valuable that piece of content is. Number two, it's ultra vivid. It's crystal clear what the thing is. What you really wanna focus on with social media and growing your business is ambiguity. So you wanna make it clear who you are, who you help, and how you help them. And when you have that, it's very clear for that person's for me or for against me. So if you look at some of the successful people in the world, if you look at, say, for example, someone like Donald Trump, a lot of people watching the video might hate Donald Trump, a lot of people might love Donald Trump, but there's very few people who are probably in the middle. And that's because he's ultra vivid and crystal clear in terms of who he is, what he does, and what his message is. Three, credibility and being credible. What is your proof that you're actually good in terms of what you do? So what you need to do is show some evidence in terms of your success. So for example, for me, we actually have, this is making a million dollars in one business in the same year, this is one making a million dollars in one business in the same year. We're waiting for a $10 million ClickFunnels award plaque to turn up. I have credibility for my success for that. I've been in Forbes, Men's Health, and those other things. This is my credibility. Now, what's your credibility? Your results can be your credibility, whether well, that's with yourself, in your own journey, your own transformation, or with the clients you work with. Number four is limbic. Now, what is limbic? Limbic is actually buying into people's emotions. If you can get people to feel an emotion with you, then they're much more likely to buy into you, to follow you, to understand your experiences, understand where you've come from, and also buy from you. 
So the biggest thing you actually need to speak about in terms of a lot of your battle tested marketing ideas are buying into people's emotions. So for example, if you are a female and you work with women who are 35, and you know a lot of people who are 35 who are female want to have kids and they don't have them yet, that's a very strong pain point you can talk to. And the more you actually hit people in terms of their pain points, which is often showing vulnerability, the more your business will blow up. And to give a great example of this, I spoke about this on our podcast with Bedros Koulian, in terms of how he spoke at Joe Polish's event and talked about how he was molested as a child. And that was the moment he really blew up in social media because people really bought into him because he was being vulnerable as someone who's super successful, but opening up about how he was molested as a child and how horrible things happened to him, but then people bought into him. Five, what is your story appeal? Everyone has a story. And this is the big thing that makes you unique. In the land of online coaching in 2024, it's a wash with the same people doing the same things, but your story is different than everyone else. And this often comes down to the context of how you teach your story, how you tell it. So one of the most important things I suggest checking out is the attractive character framework from Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, wonderful book. This helps you in terms of how to actually tell your story better. An example in terms of a good friend of mine who's crushing it is a guy called Ryan Fisher, also done a podcast with him recently, video will be up shortly. And he talks about his story in terms of how he went from homeless stealing food to being like top five in the world at CrossFit, and now having an app with 30,000 members and being a millionaire from being homeless to stealing food to being a multimillionaire in a few years. And that's an example in terms of his story. And you need to tell your story to be successful as an online coach. Okay, so now the secret to actually scaling your business to get to 50, 100K, 150K beyond, a lot of that's gonna be paid advertising. So that's basically when you put a proven concept on steroids and you really fucking rock it up. So what I'm gonna do is gonna show you actually a new type of ads we're running. So the primary type of ads I would run as an online fitness coach that work are DM messenger ads. Now, what we have set up, which is wild, is an AI chatbot. We can scale inbound messages, and then we have an AI chatbot who will handle the conversation and book a person in for a sales call. If anyone wants access to that, drop me a message on my IG, at charge lots of fitness AI, and I can send you a video on how that works. But essentially what we're doing is we have a structure where we pick like nine different cities in the US, and we're running ads to all of these. We set this up yesterday. Uh, it's only on a low budget of 250 pounds a day. And this is what's called a CBO campaign. So this is essentially, um, Facebook is optimizing the spend for us and spending across all the different countries and cities. And we'll get the, the lowest cost per, sorry, and we'll get the lowest cost per message. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like on a whiteboard now. This is our secret scaling ads strategy. Now we're using what's called a CBO campaign, which is a campaign budget optimization. What we've done is basically done is we picked uh, nine cities in the United States because the US is where our best clients come from, who pay the most. They are slightly more expensive to target, but this also then means this strategy is even more important. So what we do, we have one campaign that we just set up, which I just showed you. That is spending 250 pounds per day. Now, under this campaign, I have nine ad sets. And this is one per city or location. Now, under each of these ad sets, I have five different pieces of creative. And these five different creatives are different hooks and different calls to action to get people into our program. So it might be something, for example, like I'm looking for five busy execs in Houston. I might be looking for five guys who want to get summer ready in the next six weeks. I might be looking for five women who want to get bikini ready in the next six weeks. So this is a really simple framework and this is how you can't actually beat AI and Facebook because Facebook runs on AI. This one campaign spends at 250. We have nine ad sets running. So there's one for each individual city across the United States, five different ads in each ad set. So five ads for each city. There's nine cities we're running to. The whole 250 pounds is spread across that budget. And then Facebook will basically choose where that 250 gets spent depending on the highest performing area. And this is an insane way you can scale your ads. And this is something we do with the highest paying clients in subvicking scaling systems. We don't just give you the strategies. I love this framework that if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime. We want you to eat forever. So we teach you the skills, such as six strategies like this. So the second type of strategy we're gonna be doing in terms of actually scaling your online coaching business with paid traffic. Once you're great at making content and you're getting organic reach and that's crushing, is we actually boost that content. So we will take the highest performing content you have 
we will push that out there more by putting money behind it. And we target that specifically to the type of people you want as clients. Now what happens, this gets you more eyeballs, gets you better known. And then what you can do is you can then message those people and ask them basically to join your program. And also hopefully then they obviously hit your CTAs, they hit the link in your bio, they DM you for help. So this is a great strategy to grow your business. When you have great content, proof of concept you can sell, and we have a whole tracking system on how you can do this to blow your business up. Easily going from 50 to 100 to 150K a month. Great example of this is one of my clients, Dave Kennedy, who is in Ireland. He focuses on Irish farmers. He's just done his first two months in a row, uh, over 100,000 euros per month. The fourth step to being a successful online coach in 2024 is actually knowing your niche and who you're speaking to. So an important question to ask yourself is this, who is it is watching and why are they listening? What do they actually want to achieve? And when you understand these two things, you actually need to have that ingrained in your brain every time you make a piece of content, every time you're talking your stories, every time you do anything, because this is gonna mean that you and your brand are gonna be congruent with the people you're trying to help. And the most important thing that's gonna change your life forever is you actually building a personal brand and getting people to know, like, and trust you. And this happens when people can resonate. So you show vulnerability, you talk about your story, and the people who are watching you, listening to you, actually feeling like you get them and they, you understand. An example is that like I've been in the exact position you're in. I used to be struggling massively financially a few years ago. I used to be struggling my first month as an online coach. I had huge amounts of anxiety and overwhelm. And all these things were crippling me from the inside out and no one understood. And that's why I understand exactly the position you're in right now. If you're just trying to start your fitness business, I was in that position when I was an estate agent and I was stuck. If you're in a fitness business, you're making 10, 20K a month and you're scared, you don't know how to get to 40K a month, you don't want to take the risk. I know what that feels like. If you're at 40, 50K and you want to get 100 and you don't know how to do that and you feel frustrated and lost. I've been through all those steps and that's why I can relate to you. Once you have your content nailed down and you have traffic coming in, the next sticking point you're going to come into is what's your offer and how do you convert people into it? What do you have in your program? What's the price? Now, the biggest mistake most people make is they sell too cheap a program. They're selling programs like $150 a month, $250 a month. This is exactly what you want to do if you want to be poor and unsuccessful as an online coach. And what I want you to be is successful and have financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom, and actually work with the people who respect you and are going to pay you what you're worth. So in terms of pricing structure, the minimum I recommend most people do is this. You ideally try and pitch six to 12 month programs. Now, if you're a beginner and you lack confidence in terms of sales and selling higher price points, I was exactly like that, which is why I started my fitness business with what's called Shred in Eight, which was our eight week transformation program. It was $47 a month and like a thousand people on it. I thought I was a fucking Billy Big shit. Now, I actually, the first sale I ever sold high ticket, I remember right now, I was sitting in Starbucks in Kingston in London and I sold this guy for eight weeks of 500 pounds. I nearly fell off the chair and like high-fived everyone in the room. It was like the greatest thing ever. And that's when I realized the value of high ticket sales. After that, what actually happened is a couple of months later, I ended up signing up a client who paid me 9,000 pounds for 12 months of coaching, a guy called Jared from Florida in the United States. And then I suddenly realized why low ticket prices is the number one thing keeping you poor. So we want higher prices to make more money, to have more profit margin, which means you can grow. And you can also have more of your own time and have more freedom. So the pricing model I recommend is this. If you're a beginner, you want to start and you're, and, like, and you're cautious in terms of what to charge, sell six months programs for 997. If you have more confidence, you have more about you, which I hope you do if you're watching this video, you sell a minimum of 2K for six months, 3K for a year. Why do 2K for six months? 3K for the year is it makes the 12 months and look a no-brainer. And this is how you position your program so people want to sign up for longer programs up front. The next thing you're going to be asking is, what if people don't want six or 12 month programs, Charlie? Well, you can always downsell people to shorter programs. But if someone signs up for a monthly program or a 12 week program, you can't then try and sell them 12 months in that gate. It's very difficult. So the most important thing for you to do is make sure the pricing model is correct at the beginning. And I've sold fitness programs all the way up to 13, $14,000 for 12 months. People have the money if you have the right people on the phone, the right people watching your content and they buy into you. Now the next step of this puzzle is what do you actually deliver in the program? The most important thing people actually want is accountability. They want someone to actually make them do the thing. So you just need to give them a nutrition program, so you just need to give them training programs, supplement programs. Don't overcomplicate any more than that. The big thing people want is communication with you, be told what to do, when to do it, and how much and get results and that's it. They don't want to actually have the handheld and the big thing you'll find with clients who actually want to pay the least is that the people with the biggest problem. They'll pay you $500 and want you to change their entire life 
Whereas someone who's paid you like 10 grand is like, yeah, I just want to like drop 20 pounds and feel better and have more energy. So this is where you have to change your thinking and target people who have more money, who then also want to value you as an individual and having a higher skill set. And you have a higher skill set, it comes back to what we spoke about earlier, is in you having someone coaching you who's world class, because it makes you a better coach. And it also means you're practicing what you're preaching. You're paying people to teach you to learn skills that you can then teach to other people. And the reason I'm in the position I am in life is I've spent over $250,000 on my own self-development. So I have the skills and become a high level person. So people will pay me for the skills and knowledge I have. Number seven is how to actually close sales calls on Zoom. Now, first you wanna take sales calls on Zoom, on video, because you can have more personality. People can buy into you, you can lean into the camera, show emotion. You can emphatically pause and look up, which is something I do a lot. Something you never wanna do on a sales call is, um, uh, um. So what I often do when I'm like stuck for words, I'll look up and I'll think, while well, I'm actually trying to think like what I'm gonna say next. Now, the important thing to understand when it comes to you getting better at sales, it takes longer time for you to get better in terms of sales skills. There's something you can do very, very quickly to improve your closing rate, which is the percentage of people who actually sign up, is this. Your closing rate is determined by your sales skills multiplied by your conviction. And your conviction is how much belief you have, how much certainty you have in terms of you can help someone. And I have a thousand percent certainty in you watching this video that I can help you scale an online coaching business because I've done the thing. And that comes across in the language of my talk because there's no doubt and there's no uncertainty. It's not if you'll be successful, it's when you'll be successful. When that happens with you talking to prospective clients who wanna join your fitness program, and you're gonna talk about getting them in great shape, they get that self-belief from you, from the way you talk. And the quickest way you can be more convicted in your program is look at client results of people you've helped before, listen to client video reviews of clients you've helped before. And if you haven't got any, look at your own social proof. Have you changed an individual and got, sh got in shape? You don't have to have six pack abs and look like Chris Bumstead, but did you go from maybe 300 pounds to 200 pounds? That is the biggest thing that's gonna help you get better at sales. It's actually having conviction. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is this, and it's storytelling. Storytelling is one of the key things you need to do in all sales calls. You wanna storytell about clients who are similar to the person you're gonna be speaking to, and to get them to understand that you've solved this problem before for someone else. Explain where they started, explain where they are now, and how you actually close that gap and you've got the person in the end result. And the second thing is gonna be in terms of storytelling from your own experience. Like I did earlier in this video, I talked about how I launched my low ticket program and I really struggled to sell high ticket until I got self-belief. That's me storytelling the truth of what happened to me. And the more you storytell in sales calls, the more results you're gonna get in higher closing percentage. And the last piece I wanna leave you with is this, and this is the real secret. And it's selling on emotion and not on features. The biggest mistake most trainers make is they sell on, oh, I'm gonna give you this macro plan, I'm gonna give you this special app. No one cares. People want to understand that you understand their base emotional needs. And this depends on the person who's on the other side of the call. So the one thing I try and do is envisage the person I'm speaking to right now, how would I feel if I were them? If I was 250 pounds and I was struggling with self-confidence and couldn't get in shape and I've been struggling for 10 years, how would I feel? And that's how I really want to come across. And in terms of when you take these calls to people, the goal should always be this, that you change the person's life regardless whether they sign up on the sales program or not. And if you go in with that intention and you really try and help them and you have that conviction, the closing rate you will have will be way, way higher rather than getting commission breath and selling on benefits and features, which is what happens to most people on sales calls. Number eight, how to create leverage and scale. So the most important thing for you in terms of your fitness business to be successful and not have the golden handcuffs where you make money but you hate your life, I have been there, you wanna have a business that works for you and you don't work for it. And you do this by actually having team members and building infrastructure and also automating things. So I mentioned earlier in terms of how having automated AI is handling a lot of our inbound messages in terms of our fitness business. You also wanna try and delegate out a lot of stuff in terms of actually building a team. Now, the first thing you want to do in terms of hiring within your business is actually video editors because you should not be editing your own videos. The second thing I suggest you do is also then hire coaches to help with fulfillment. As soon as you sell, get yourself out of fulfillment, you can focus on the front end and actually really growing the business and becoming the attractive character. And remember becoming best known beats best. And this is an important framework that we really teach. And to give you an example, here's a copy of some of our organizational chart from my own business. We have a lot of staff in terms of different areas. And all these people give me a huge amount of different like, leverage. Our content team, we now have five video editors alone. I couldn't even have enough time in a week just to edit our videos, let them do everything else in the business. 
And one of the big mistakes I see so many people making who are online coaches looking to grow is they try to scale their fitness business by them doing everything. This will keep you poor, in particular when it comes to coaching. So when you're hiring coaches, what you want to focus on is having an 80% profit margin. This means 20% of your expenses go to coaching. So what do we generally charge is we pay our coaches around 40 pounds per month per client, and they also get some bonuses on top of that. But this means that we have a huge amount of profit margin, which means we can actually put that money into front-end marketing, into media, actually focus on growing the business. The biggest mistake a lot of coaches make is they give their coaches way too much and doing things like a 50-50 revenue share. I'm also based in Dubai and don't pay tax. If you're in the UK, US, you'll get hammered by tax, you're giving the coach half of the business. This is the quickest way to have a business which is a headache, a lot of work, and also not a lot of money in your bank at the end of the month. Now the goal in terms of leverage is buying back your time and understanding the value of your time. And the other little nugget I'm gonna do is this. You wanna avoid doing stupid shit in your personal life that's gonna be holding you back. So if you wanna be successful and you're making over maybe 5K a month, you should not be cleaning your own house. You should not be cleaning your own car. You should also not be cooking. Cooking keeps you poor. And this is something you need to understand is the value of what your time is worth. And a really good exercise you can do, take the total profit in terms of what you made last year, for example, divide it by how many hours you work. So if you take, say for example, most people work maybe 35 hours a week. If you times that by 50, so you took two weeks off, and then you divide that by how much you earned, that will give you your cost, sorry, that will give you how much money you make per hour. And the job role here for you is to delegate off anything that's 50% of your hourly rate. So no gardening, no cleaning car, no housekeeping, no doing the laundry, no cooking. You should ideally get someone else to do this. You cooking, you cleaning is keeping you poor. Get someone else to do it. If you took value from this video, I have one ask for you. Do you smash the like button and share this with someone who's looking to scale their business. See you next video now.